Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for a short story discussion. This video will appear in the short story discussion playlist on the channel, obviously. So what are we looking at today? We are looking at The Storm by Kate Chopin. A Missouri kid, by the way. You know, just, just throwing that out there. Just throwing that out there. So what happens in The Storm? Well, we open in one here with Bobino and Bibi, a man, a husband, and his son who are at the store as a storm breaks out and they decide to wait out the storm. Then we cut to Calixta. Uh, she is married to Bobino and she is at home working on some sewing when the storm is about to break out. And right before it does, I'll say, Monsieur I'll say, is spotted in the yard and he asks her, he's on his horse and he asks her um, if he can come in for shelter. Now, he means to stay outside and she allows it, but once the rain is coming down sideways, uh, it appears they may as he may as well be outside outside, so he comes in uh, for the storm, and the two make sweet love. Then we cut to Bobino and Bibi getting home here in sub story three, and guess what? There's dinner on the table. Dinner and coffee on the table. Cut to I'll say in part four, writing a letter to his wife saying, hey, uh, if you and the kids are happy in Biloxi, you, you can go ahead and stay there for a little while longer. And then we get Clarissa, uh, Clarice, Clarice saying, uh, yeah, no, we're, we're probably going to be here a little bit longer. I am more than happy. Whoops. I am more than happy to stay here. So what are we talking about in this story? Well, I think it is pretty obvious that a lot of the symbols here are going to be of a sexual nature. We're going to be talking about sexual type stuffs in this story, and we can start it. Where am I at? Here we go. We can... Nope, that's not it. I've ruined everything. We can start just all the way up here with the storm. This, um, this is a, so wetness, water, running water, being wet. That is a symbol of sexual female arousal. Then we have Calixta, Calixta and I'll say, shoving a door or a bag under the door to keep the wetness from coming in, the flooding wetness from coming in. Now, all say is wet here. Her husband, Calixta's husband, Bobino, has stayed dry. These should be things which make you think. Upon returning... Bobino has bought Calixta. Where are we at? Down here in three. Bobino has bought Calixta a can of shrimps. Where are we at here? I bought you some shrimps, Calixta. Offered Bobino, hauling the can from his ample side pocket and laying it on the table. Now, here we go. This is a this is a symbol that could be taken on two levels. The shrimps here, number one, obviously, uh, this could be a this could be read as a metaphor for a small male member. You have heard this term thrown about, shrimp d. You've heard that term, um, haven't we all? Right, we all know that term. That's not just me, right? Everyone knows that term. I think. You understand what I'm saying. Shrimp is often um, a metaphor for small. So when it is the husband giving the shrimp versus I'll say who had stopped by um, and there was no shrimp to be had, that could 
be a talking point there. But I think there is also another way to interpret it, to interpret this. Calixta is given the shrimp. So Babano buys the shrimp because he knows Calixta likes it. Calixta gets the shrimp and says, shrimps, oh, Babano, you're too good for anything. She enjoys shrimp. Well, what is shrimp? Shrimps are a scavenger. So she enjoys that scavenger. Scavengers eat food that they find. That is how scavengers feed. They find food and feast, much in the same way that all say found the sex with Calixta. He found it. He was passing by, found Calixta, and they had their romp. Another symbol that could be seen as sexual here, a bolt struck a tall china berry tree at the edge of the field. It filled all visible space with blinding glare and the crash seemed to invade the very boards they stood upon. So we have this enthralling thing happen as electricity strikes what might be seen as a phallic symbol. So there is a lot of sexual stuff going on here. Uh, and also, I think it's important maybe to talk about the uh, the names involved in this story. Calixta is from the Greek Callisto, probably, right? It's not an exact translation, but probably. Callisto is she that is most beautiful. And we have this... Uh, the way that, hold on, we have the way that All Say describes her. He describes her in this fashion as if she had always been the most beautiful, as if she had always been so desirable. And when we first find her, she's put on a little bit of weight since being married, we're told. She has become a little bit fuller, but she is still very alluring, we're told. Um, so Cal Calixta is the most beautiful. Alce is apparently Greek, and I did not, I had no idea about this. Uh, I just put it in the Google machine. Greek for strong-willed or powerful. Now, that might seem to be ironic, and perhaps in the end it is, but we have two things here which make us feel that perhaps he really is a strong-willed individual. He kind of infers that he had been restraining all of the love that he had for Calixta all this time, all the while she remained alluring, so alluring, and he did not make a play for her. And then, when he later writes his wife, he tells her, you can stay longer. I can be alone longer. Now, I think there's several ways to read that part, but it might infer that, in fact, um, the will possessed by all say is resolute, even if he did falter in this story. And then we have Bobino. What is is Bobino. Is that his first name? Is that his last name? It's hard to say for real. I have never heard Bobino as a name, but I think it is possible to infer a little bit what we're going at when we start talking about Bobino the name. When we find Calixta, she is at the window sewing furiously on a sewing machine um, and barely even recognized the storm. She's sewing on a sewing machine. Sewing machines have bobbins. So it seems to me that maybe Bobino is just a sort of play on the word bobbin, at least perhaps that is how it is deployed in 
the story. A bobbin is something which holds the spool of thread, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on this. I am, I, I am not up to date on my sewing terms. But if that is the case, Calixta is able to sew furiously, so one would imagine that she is quite good at sewing. Sewing is work. Being the sewer is to work the sewing. So, Calixta is able to manipulate and manipulate the tools at her disposal, such as Bobino, and she's able to manipulate those tools and get them to do exactly what she wants. Now, in this story, Calixta, well, she gets the good sex, she stays out of the storm, and she's brought food by her husband. Now, she's doing work all the while, yes, but there, and by the way, at the beginning here, we have from Mama Be Afraid, he suggests with blinking eyes, we have Bibi, 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 very concerned about Calixta. We have Bobino, so concerned about Calixta that he brings her the shrimp. Uh, and we have, obviously, I'll say, who is more than a little concerned with Calixta. So she is really the, the centerpiece of all of this, working all of these individuals and winning the day from all of them. Now, there's a couple things that I think deserve interpretation, further interpretation here. Down here in the very last, we have Al Say writing his wife and saying, don't hurry back. If you like it out there, you and the kids can stay another month. Why? Why did he do that? Why did he write that? Is it because he can't bear to look her in the eyes? Is that the case? Is it because the urge has passed him? He had up this he had this frustration built up. He let it go. And now he's not all that concerned with whether or not his wife comes back. I think there is, I think that it is important to make the decision on that for yourself. And that is going to really shape a good deal of what you feel about this short story. Now, I'll say is probably he's, either the second or third most important character in here. Calixta is the central, the centrifuge of this entire short story. I think that uh, cannot be argued. But we do end with All Say's story. We don't end with All Say. We end with Clarissa, Clarice. But how we feel about whether or not I'll say was being was too too ashamed to look his wife in the eyes, or whether he is one of these fellas that gets the urge, but not all the time. And now that he's had his fill, he can go back into hibernation. I think that paints very strongly how you feel about that character. Now, we have very neutral tones from Kate Chopin here. But we don't have a whole lot of judgment from the authorial voice at all. At all. These things are presented as if they have just kind of happened. You know, the sun rose. The tide came in. There was an extramarital affair. The only time that it is sort of um, maybe off-putting 
that there is no moralization happens uh, in a very small part of the story. It happens very quickly here. And it makes me wonder about this story. Where are we at here? I didn't highlight it, did I? Give me one second. I apologize for this. I thought I had uh, highlighted it. No, I, where am I at? So when I'll say is driving away, driving away, riding his horse away. Golly, where is it at? With one hand, she clasped his... Nope, that's not it. Oh, here we go. Um, The rain was over, and the sun was turning the glistening green world into a palace of gems. Calixta, on the gallery, watched Alce ride away. He turned and smiled at her with a beaming face, and she lifted her pretty chin in the air and laughed aloud. Laughed aloud? She laughed aloud after just cheating on her husband. Now, this is a very strange little paragraph here. And it leads us to believe, to conject, perhaps, perhaps this is not the first romp for Alce and Calixta. Perhaps they have been here before. Perhaps they have done this before. Now, there is a bit of the heat of the moment where Alce says um, something to the effect of he, he had never, he had, where are we at? He had never seen her body or something like that. Borderland of life's mystery. I think that suggests that he has never done this with her. And do you remember Assumption, Calixta? He asked in a low, broken voice by passion. Oh, she remembered, for in Assumption, he had kissed her and kissed her until his senses would would well nigh fail to and to save her he would resort to desperate flight now this suggests that they have been intimate before but i don't know that it suggests that it was after calixta had been married to bobino nor does it suggest per- so it su- it does suggest that they did not go this far but both of them Both of these individuals here are happy. There's no hint between either of them that they'd just done something that should not be done. And Calixta herself, with her pretty chin in the air, laughing aloud, is this either of these individuals' first extramarital affair? Is this the first time that either of them has been in this predicament? The fact that they are so brazen in the aftermath of this, the fact that neither of them hesitated once the action started to say, hey, what if the husband and son were actually on the way home. None of them, neither of them, pardon me, had stopped to think about that. They just went hog wild into things. I'm not sure this is the first time either of these two individuals has been involved in an extramarital affair, though perhaps... It is the first time they have been involved in an extramarital affair with each other, at least through fruition, if you will. That is all I have for this this 
short story discussion. This is a video that will be found in the short story discussion playlist here on the channel. If you find yourself here by chance, but not design, literature is the only thing that I talk about on this channel. Poetry every Mondays, but also obviously short stories and novel read-alongs. I'm currently working my way through No Longer Human by Osamu Dazai on the channel if you want to participate in that. And... Um, if you want to help me out with what I'm doing on the channel, hitting the like button really does the trick as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers, and I hope to have you back for the next one.